Hey there, awesome coaches. I wanted to jump in here today and talk about an issue that has come up a lot, imposter syndrome. I want to kind of take you through some of the some of the ways that I've overcome my fear. If you don't know about me, a lot of people who know me quite well knows that I have a lot of anxiety that can often paralyze me. And this was anxiety that I had to learn how to reshape and reframe so that I could build my wellness business and that I could get out of my own way, out of my own fears. So I want to start with some really significant tips and they are not, they're, they're not really tough ones. These are the ones that actually we preach to our clients. So one is... I want you to actually embrace imposter syndrome. Somebody in my membership group asked about imposter syndrome. And, you know, I think that it's something we don't talk about enough because the truth is we all have it. So I said to her, this is just fear. So one is to look at imposter syndrome, which is just fear. It's all the same concerns that we have when we're a new coach or when we're in a growth stage, like, is this going to sell? Is somebody going to hire me? Is somebody going to say no to my you know, pitch to them? An example of a pitch is you have a workshop and you're pitching this to a wellness center, a chiropractor, a doctor's office. And the moment that we step into that light of like, oh, I'm going to call this person. I'm going to see if they want you know, to let me do this workshop on food allergies or autoimmune or, you know, emotional eating, that fear steps in. That's just the imposter syndrome fear. And so step number one is to talk to it, to really say, you know, hey, this imposter syndrome has nothing to do with my capabilities. And so that's one aspect of imposter syndrome is to really believe that you know what you're talking about. You've lived it, you've breathed it, you experienced it. And then the second part is to also say to ourselves the same thing we say to our clients. You know, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that sometimes I have autoimmune flares. I got diagnosed with, you know, Lyme and I've been on life support twice for asthma leaky gut since in child, um, I had ulcerative colitis, all of these different things. So I feel that it, we step into imposter syndrome when we think that we have to be perfect. So I just showed you like those two different compartments of how I've always addressed my fears and also sat in the self-analysis to say, why are you actually feeling this fear? Why are you not being vulnerable? Why do you have like shame around telling people what's actually going on? And that part, those two aspects and looking at the vulnerability that is required, and it's going to look different for each one of us to attract our ideal client. That allowed me to start having those inner talks with myself, practicing and really starting to believe in myself. The next is the second part, the second aspect of imposter syndrome. I feel like for a lot of us is shame. We hear from the best, James Wedmore and Stu McLaren and Amy Porterfield and Marie Forleo. We hear these words, hero journey. And our hero journey isn't just looking back and saying, well, I went through this and now I'm here. You know, we call this in micro stories or in building your business, like what happened, what was life like, what did you do, and what did you learn, and what do you teach now? It's kind of the elements of your About Me page or the elements of building these stories around your journey. That's the marketing side. The emotional mindset side is that we have to look back on our journey, no shame or blame, and say... I wish I would have known this or, you know, often in my case, because my kids were born with heavy metals and parasitic infections and funguses and bacteria and so much junk, I often felt shame about sharing that because it brings up sadness. 
So I always say that that next part of building this really healthy business isn't just to follow the marketing steps. It's to also give yourself compassion and love, free yourself from that shame that we often feel our shame, our guilt, our ego that, you know, we didn't maybe make the best choice or we didn't know what to do. And so a lot of us as coaches walk around with shame of telling our own story and we don't even realize that it's affecting our marketing. And when I say marketing, I don't mean, you know, the digital marketing strategy or your Facebook ads. I mean, the sharing of your story, the sharing of your story in the very elements that your ideal client really needs to know about you to build trust. So that person, even from a free source like Facebook Live or a YouTube video, or you spoke at a presentation, they are going to naturally reach out to you because you touched their heart and you really shared some of the things that were hard for you or a struggle or how you overcame that situation or how you would have changed it. And it's in that ownership of our story that the imposter syndrome starts to fade away. The last part of this is the vulnerability. Each one of us have a different style in our life and a different style in our business of how we wanna build it, but we do have to be vulnerable to the point that our ideal client hears enough of our own story that they don't just look at us as like this perfect person. And if you are that perfect person, help your client to know and understand like what brought you to be this person that like always chooses the right food and never, you know, eats a bag of potato chips or, you know, never falls off and says, oh, I'm going to eat this gluten. Because maybe in that and really explaining to your ideal client in your messaging, in your freebies, in your groups, you know, on social media, or even in face-to-face -face events that we do, this is when your client's going to either say, oh, wow, I really identify. I can't believe this coach said that she or he, you know, ate this piece of gluten the other day and, you know, they fell off that per se wagon and this is what they did. That one element of like, I'm human, that vulnerability, that transparentness that we have to have is one of the biggest ways that we build trust. For another coach, and I can think of a coach <clears throat> who has built a very successful membership with our programs, she is very structured. And she always says, you know, I, I actually have been structured my whole life. Like I'm that person that never falls off the wagon. I consistently go for my run. I never miss a workout. I always choose the best. And she would say, you know, and a big part of my messaging is saying to people, no, hey, this is how I'm made. But these are also the things that I have diligently done over the years. That's a still another way of inspiring people, being vulnerable, vulnerable meaning to own actually your story and to look at and say, I don't need this like Debbie Downer story. And it doesn't mean that the other person who shares those ups and downs is a Debbie Downer. It's a different love language for each one of our styles and our clients. So this other coach would always share <clears throat> exactly how she never fell short. And her transparency was sharing more of like her emotional mindset of overcoming those aspects when she, or those times in life when she would feel that she actually, that it was harder to hold herself accountable to her, you know, her norm. So here's the action step is to, you know, be honest with yourself about where you have fears. How are they affecting your mindset? How are they affecting your ability to show up for your client in a way that suits you, 
suits how you speak, would be the love language that your client needs to hear. And when I say a love language, it's it's how we show up and express our ups and our downs or really good days or those bad days and how we've overcome it. In that sharing, in whatever way it feels right for you, trust me, your ideal client will message you. They will DM you because they will be so touched that they will actually come into your funnel, your, your list builder, your workshop, your group. And they will even personally message you, which is so much more powerful than even getting somebody on a list. Because in that conversation, you can share in more about your life, the transparency, what you wish you would have known back when you were struggling with your issues. And even some of the vulnerability aspects, like do those ever, do those issues ever get, you know, ignited from stress or, you know, do you always stay on track? And, you know, I talked about that a little earlier in this training. So if you came in late, you know, just listen to these different aspects of how our shame, our own story, our own either sadness about our journey or maybe things that we were sad that we didn't get emotionally, physically, spiritually can affect how we show up, can affect our social media posts, can affect how we also present ourselves in life. And so this isn't just a great exercise for our business. This is exactly why, yeah, people stayed with me in my wellness business is that it is that mindset of change. It is helping somebody to reframe the stories. You know, we all have our own stuff, our own old stories. You know, Gabby Bernstein 101 of reframing, Miriam Williamson, all these pioneers that we all either found or that we were so lucky to find when we went to school. Well, the same work we have to do on our health is the same work we have to do on our business. And the faster that we all, you know, show up without shame or honor our shame, honor our feelings, honor our self-doubts, honor our overwhelm in building a business, it's the same feelings that our clients have when we give them a program and it feels too overwhelming. Or our client comes to us with emotional eating issues and they want a plan and a plan is provided and they go into a binge. Or the same feeling that when you're taking somebody off gluten and they're overwhelmed, they go into gluten because it is our mind, it is our fears. And so, just remember the very work for you to overcome your business fears at any stage, brand new, you know, having a solid packed, you know, roster of clients and, you know, feeling that uncomfortableness in a growth stage. It's the same feelings your clients have about their health. So step back into your health journey shoes and always think, what is my client feeling? Because I guarantee it's exactly that overwhelm that you're feeling. Make sure that you're always working on the mindset part because that is more powerful than any blueprint. Um, blueprints are great, but blueprints are not your unique blueprint. And so, you know, in the empowerment that we provide for our clients, that's with choice. It's the same thing in the empowerment that you're going to have to do individually. Even if you are working with a coach, you have 86,400 seconds in a day. How many thoughts are coming into your subconscious that say, no one's going to sign up. No one's going to hire you. You probably sound stupid. You don't know enough. Oh, that other person has the better website. That other person has the better. There's none of that. There's none of that when we're really clear on the steps that we take to level our own fears. So guys, I hope you're having a beautiful Monday. Um, such a great opportunity every day to work on our mindset because it's going to dictate how we show up in our day, not just in our business, in our relationships, 
our own health, our sleep, our hormones, our gut. Um, so with that being said, if you have any questions, drop them below. Um, this could be, no joke, six hours <laughs> of content just around this area. Um, but it all has to start with the releasing of shame, the releasing of our fears, the massive honesty with self about where we're overwhelmed so that we can, you know, get out of our own way. Guys, I hope everyone's great. And with that being said, I will see you guys later. And uh, hope you have a beautiful one. Bye, guys.